So. Nah, pass. Pass. Thrush. Present. Press. Pre press. 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 <laughs> I was like, present. That's not. That's press. not an option. <laughs> It's not an option. But what about the possibility that the window was opened? What about it? I mean, there's just no way it could have been. How can you be so sure? The prosecutor fell out over there said it earlier, didn't he? Winters in London are no joke. You don't want to invite that sort of cold indoors. So no, that window wasn't open. Us Londoners like sitting by the fire and staying warm, see? But you couldn't categorically state that the window wasn't open, could you? It just wasn't. They wouldn't have opened it. Then what's the point of even having windows, huh? Gongsil, you'll kindly refrain from childish bickering. Oh, um, sorry. Somehow I need to show there's an undeniable possibility that the window was open. Because this young man isn't going to budge otherwise. Push. Great press. Hey. Push. <laughs> The little book was Push on... it real good. <laughs> the little book was on fire at the time, was it not? Journal number four. Of love, I'll have you know. There's really no such thing as a loving incendiary bomb. <laughs> well, he better be on himself. It's filled with fire to betray a fiery love. Isn't it well? Don't you agree? Oh, um, well, any kind of betrayal is certainly a bad thing, yes. But I think the argument might have arisen out of your misunderstanding, Mrs. Gerdab. Oh, mind you, that the point is, we were having a jovial little dispute, nothing more. <laughs> and I won't have any more suggestions that it was anything whatsoever to do with this crime. Right, well, we'll see about that. What about juror number five? He doesn't seem to be turning a hair, Mrs. Gerardov's relentless onslaughts. It's almost as though he's used to it. What a gentle soul he is. Ah, uh, yeah, push. Whatever. I just want to get this over with. How can he sit there and say something like that? A man's future is at stake here. Well, who made me bored then, like I said before? What? I told you already, I'm a day laborer, aren't I? If I don't bring home some readies with me tonight, you'll find me floating face down in the time, Thames tomorrow morning. What? You heard me. My missus isn't one to mess about, you know. She'll be fierce, believe you me. Another shining example of marital bliss, then. There's a trade like this cropped up the other day. It was, well, um... You know, it's funny, but I can't quite remember. Sorry? It was too frightening, that's the thing. Must have blocked it out. Helpful. I wonder if Mr. Beat will ever be dragged into the Thames by his scarf. Don't even go there, Miss Suzato. There must be some way to jag his memory about this. Can you present evidence, or can you no. just pit? You can just press and pit. Um, can you pit that against the orange man? Is the, that... What he's saying right now? Wait, go back. Oh no, that's not it. Ugh. Ah. Uh. I mean, go back to the beginning then, the ones I skipped. Ugh, might as well. As we now know, there were four books, not three. Well, what difference does it make? There's every possibility that the fourth book, in fact, belongs to the defendant's landlord. Yes, that. That's the part I have a problem with. Sorry? Well, at the point that the woman was stabbed, this little fellow was a hot, wasn't he? Enjoying a fiery scrap with his wife or something, you said? 
That's not exactly how I put it, no. Well, anyway, the point is, the fellow and his wife were somewhere else when it happened. Hmm. I think that's what you call a strong alibi. So it couldn't have been the landlord who did it, but only the a Nippanese fellow. Honestly, I can't see what all this palaver is about. It's a done deal, isn't it? I suppose it is. It's have nothing witty left to say. Push it real good. Press. So, you may be, able to be willing to change your decision, you mean? Oh my, is this the light on your face? When I face a ship, be swayed by emotion. Despite what you may think of me, I'm a very modern, metropolitan, and rational woman. That's great. If one reads the morning papers, it's all forgotten by tea time, isn't it? So why read them in the first place? You see, modern, metropolitan, and rational thinking, wouldn't you say? Not at all extreme. As I see it, an overwhelmingly suspicious Japanese man had been implicated by an overwhelmingly strong testimony. But despite one or two minor puzzlements, I do declare the man is overwhelmingly guilty. Modern, metropolitan, and rational logic, wouldn't you say? Overwhelmingly. I can't say I disagree with her. <laughs> the most modern gals are always delighted to embrace new fads, you know. So, I'd only be too happy to consider an exciting new theory if you could come up with one. I'd be happy to do that too, if only I could. Let's do our very best not to disappoint the modern and metropolitan young lady. Right. I'm glad you admitted rational there. <laughs> 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 yeah. He pressed this one. We didn't push this one. Did we? You did. Unless you want oh, to press yeah, it yeah, again, yeah. but so, I guess. No, press the old man. Hold it. Does that have anything to do with your decision about the defendant's culpability in this case? Sorry, what's that? You have to speak up, lad. Could you tell us more about that fire? It was last winter. My grandchildren break me a lovely cake on my birthday. Oh, I had a winter birthday. It had 75 candles on the top it did. It was a sight to behold it was. You put, you put candles on a cake? Was, was it some kind of devil <laughs> worship? Of course not. It was an angel cake. To celebrate my birthday, obviously. Oh, God. <laughs> It seems that a common custom here in Great Britain, Mr. Naruto. Anyway, I mustered up all my puff to blow them out. Only I must have blown some rock somehow. The flames didn't go out, but the candles were flying all over the room. The furniture caught and everything went up. The whole place filled with smoke. Tiffany sounds like devil worship to me. Oh, really? And by the sneezes, I presume you mean a cold. But how do you catch a cold from the fire? What a fiasco it was. My grandchildren blessed them, threw water all over me as they tried to put out the flames. And then, because the whole room had filled up with smoke, of course, we had to open all the windows to clear it. The windows? The biting winter air rushed over me like the devil dancing on my grave it did. I caught a terrible cold from it. Put me in a hospital for a while. I won't forget that birthday in a hurry. I knew it was devil worship all along. Something about this old man's story is playing in my mind for some reason. Sh Shady says, "Twas Pazuzu, man. I hope he's a Pazuzu worshiper." <laughs> uh, Twas Pazuzu. Uh, we need to demonstrate who, apart from Mr. Natsume. Could have attacked the young man on the street. Pazuzu. Pazar, <laughs> Pazuzu. <laughs> as well as how he or she could have done it. Yes, but once the jury's statements are full, once again the jury's statements are full of personal prejudice, 
None of them seem convinced they're right, even in the face of logical arguments to the contrary. I think you're going to need to pick them against each other to force them to accept an alternative explanation. Yes. I don't necessarily need to find contradictions between their assertions, just a connection made to this trick. Alright, I'll see what I can do. If anything stands out, I'll go in for a strike. Is it spirit? Okay, so pit the old man against him. Who? So, pit, pit him. He's he's getting pit. But uh no, not that one. Uh no. That one, yeah, I was right. Pit those two against each other. These two jurors' statements clearly contradict one another. They don't say they contradict uh, one they another. They do. But... How exactly, Council? <laughs> They're vaguely related to each other. <laughs> don't point at me again. I told you it wasn't me. Mm? What's that you say? Speak up, lad. Speak up. You need to pee? Juror number three, don't you see? Oh, me. See, see what, sir? Did you hear juror number six's account of his birthday celebrations last year? Seems, despite being a Londoner, he once he once opened his windows in the middle of winter. Yes, of course, but because it was an emergency. I mean, obviously, if the room was filled with smoke from a fire, then he'd be mad not to open the. Oh. Exactly. On the day in question, at the time of the incident, there was a fire in the Gerdab's household. Mister Gerdab had the following to say about it. The whole place filled with smoke. <coughs> and my hat! Oh, 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 look around. <laughs> oh, look at it, look at her pounding that feet. Her soup. Excuse me. She's just like straight just pouring right into her mouth. Chair number four, do you have something to say about that? Miss Gardab. Oh, dear me. What's the meaning of this? I'm getting your point and I'm hiding who I really am. It's imperative that you confirm something for the court. So please, it's time to drive the pre pretense now. Pretense now. You not hear me? No. What is it? When the fire started in your house that day, did you or your husband open the window? What? I, I beg your pardon? What are you insinuating? The room would have been thick with smoke after the carpet in both cases caught fire as they did. In a situation like that, it's inconceivable that you wouldn't have opened the window. And what if I did? Oh, all right then. Yes, you're right. My husband was frantically trying to open the window. Which can't have been easy since I continued to give him a just as as a book battering. Even though your house is on fire. Oh, you never stop throwing into the anger of sorrows. It would be terribly bad for the nerves to do otherwise. <laughs> of course, I, I should have realized. That's a significant step forward, Mr. Narahodo. You managed to stand that the window was open. We simply must have that have we miss we simply must have that added to Mr. Scarita's formal statement. Uh, sometimes like the the way that they build sentences makes it very hard. Listen, uh, it's eighteen hundred sentence structure. <laughs> uh, we're gonna pit this statement uh against uh go back. Uh no. Uh, no, 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 no. We're, no, we're not pitting that right now. Okay. I don't think. What's the next statement? No. 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 I don't know yet, so get out of that one. Um, uh, 
Go to the guy with the hat, with the blonde guy. Huh. <laughs> yeah, they all have hats. The <laughs> guy with a hat. Yeah. That's the helpful. Oops. The guy with a hat. Every single one of them have hats. <laughs> yeah, so that one. And pit him against Fair Play. Because Fair Play says three books, but he's saying that she was throwing books. So there would have been more books on the road. Uh... Is that not accurate? Is that, is that not fair? Yeah, I don't think you have something there. Okay, so let's uh, let's press the new statement from Mrs. Garridan. The fourth book found at the scene of the crime shows very obvious signs of fire damage. And the title of the book is The Lion's Pride. The same title, in fact, is the book that Mr. Garridan still us told us he had been reading. What? We didn't catch that. Oh. I really couldn't say. Also, yeah, Shady, literally every juror has a hat. <laughs> the day in question, did you, or, did you or did you not throw it at your husband? The copy of the Lion's Pride that he had been reading. <clears throat> I did. It was the first thing I could lay my hands on, so I hurled it straight at him. And now you've come now now you've come to mention it, yes. He was rather enjoying reading it, you're right. Why did you not reveal this information to the court from the outset? Because I couldn't do insolent man, I didn't remember. Times like that, you pick up and throw whatever you can lay your hands on, as you well know. Including knives? I really don't. Oh boy. Oh. I barely noticed I was showing a book, much less the title of it. Oh. Excuse me. Oh. He's flexing. What is it, Jura yeah. number five? Flex. You know oh, something? Boy. I've I've remembered what it was. That memory had blocked out. Ah. I was listening to what this granny was saying, brought all flooding back. Who oh, are you calling a granny, you cheeky devil? I'm Mrs. Gary Depp or the maid, I'll have you know. The man doesn't even flinch. Please tell me that's not because he's used to being hit all the time. It, it was about two weeks ago now. I just got back home after work, like. I put my hand in my pocket for the wage register on it that day, and I nearly died. There was a hole. Every last penny had dropped out. Oh dear, what a disaster. You yeah, heard the half of it, boy. Oh? The wife was cutting up some chicken at the time. I, I could hardly get the words out, but I told her straight. I've lost the day wages, love. Next thing I knew, the blade was whistling past my ear. It struck me into the wall next to me, it did, about an inch deep. No words, just terror. I could smell it then, you know, that god awful stench of the Thames. I'm not sure I was going to end up face down in the muddy banks that day, night, I can tell you. Now, that's a real disaster, isn't it? I never get to use that word lightly again. Shady said no, that was the piss in your pants. I assume you meant the sm the stink of the Thames. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this. What I'm trying to make this. When, when, when the woman loses the rag, they'll throw any, almost anything at you. Knives, hatchets, hammers, you name it. Oh, hold on. You mustn't think that us women are so short-tempered and unrefined. No, no, I wasn't thinking that. Household objects are people is what? It's so uncivilized. At least attack with honor, using a bow or the like. What? Attack? Who are you going to attack? <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, this man's words. Could be rather significant, I think. Alright, we'll come back to the bow and arrow thing later, if I dare.
Okay, we're presenting, we're pitting that against, uh, no, not that one. Uh, maybe that one? Yes or no? Make a choice. Uh, what is Garadeb saying? Yeah, no, it's against, uh, the, the girl with the hat. <laughs> the girl with the hat. <laughs> that is at least two yeah. people here. <laughs> <laughs> Those two statements clearly have a deeply significant connection. Good grief, hearing they don't contradict each other. Explain, Council, at once. Journal number two. Do you think, perhaps, that this could be one, one such novel alternative? Oh my, whatever do you mean? An alternative explanation is to how the victim was stabbed in the back. You're what are you talking about? Accusing another person of killing people. That's not nice. That's <laughs> not nice. We've demonstrated the fourth book, The Lion's Pride, that was found at the scene of the crime. Originated in Mr. Gerdeb's room in the top floor of his house. Therefore, it's equally possible that some other object besides the book could have found its way into the Gerdeb household to the street below. Uh, uh, what's that now? After all, Mr. Mr. Gerdeb could have thrown any number of different objects at her husband. Isn't that right, juror number four? <laughs> what are you insinuating now? You, you little beanpole! Beginning to think that, ever since the true origins of this book came to light. Perhaps she's had a feeling this might be what happened. Now you listen here, you eastern girl! As the foreman of this jury and a man of straight answer. You give us a shot about some other object making its way out of the house. But what? What was it? I'm really taking a big gamble here. There's a bold accusation to make, but I haven't any real evidence to back it up. So you shouldn't say it in court! <laughs> but I'm certain that at the very least this warrants further investigations. Um. Alright, Mr. Farmer, I'll try to explain the defense's theory. The other object that found its way from the Gerda household to the scene of the crime was... We don't know! <laughs> we don't know, this is conjecture! This is conjecture, but you're providing an alternative theory for this woman who wants an alternative Look. theory! Ugh, disgusting. She wants to do her own research. <laughs> she wants to do her own fact-based research because she's a what modern metropolitan rational woman. So let's, let's show her a knife. <laughs> Mrs. Garrett could have thrown a knife through her window. Therefore, she killed him. Not my guy. Arrest her. Journal number four, Mr. Garrett, M Mrs. Garrett up. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Garrett, I just pops out from underneath. Uh, yes, <laughs> I'm here. What, what now? Shitty says not her research if you're telling it to her. That's kind of the point. <laughs> <laughs> Must apologize in advance for this. <laughs> but I need you to confirm something else for the court. I must apologize in advance. This knife. <laughs> but... Have you ever seen this knife before? I must apologize in advance, but I think you killed this person. I think you killed this person. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Good lord, Council. What on earth are you doing? That's the weapon that was lodged in the victim's back, man. Uh, and all because she chose to go to jury duty that day. <laughs> My lord, remember that when the victim was attacked, Mr. and Mrs. Gerda were in the throes of an argument. I don't know if you choose to go to jury duty. <laughs> Mrs. Gerdeb was hurling anything she could at her husband, who'd been backed up against the window. A window that had been opened to clear the smoke, and through which a book sailed to land to the crime scene. Can't seriously believe that, that book was found in the victim's grasp. He's seen that flew at the window and across the street to land neatly in her hand. Huh, even my missus ain't got rain like that. Yes, I admit, there are many details you don't yet understand. That's the point. That's precisely why. You must not allow this trial to end. Not right now. 
my. Ah. Mr. Gurdab, your answer, please. Have you seen this knife before or not? She's dead. <laughs> my lord. Oh, let's see you. Okay. My, my lord. I, I wish to change my decision. I'm a woman of my word after all. Thank you, madam. Yes, I agree. I certainly didn't see this coming, but... I just don't think it will be right for this trial to come to an end which is now with so many unanswered questions. Mr. Foreman. I'd have to agree. Not that I think the granny did it, mind. Yes, you know what? I'm not quite happy about this at the moment, either. Once again, now, ladies and gents. The old man doesn't even know what's going on. He's just like, whatever. <laughs> but do you still need to be? We, no. we did it. Oh, congratulations, Mr. Dowhado. So, as a result of the defense submission examination, a number of jurors' leanings have changed. Two jurors call guilty, against four now calling innocent. Accordingly, the opinion of the court is divided. Is this trial so will mad. continue. He's so mad. He's like, what the heck? <laughs> Twice now! <laughs> I'm getting sick and tired of this. My learned Nepanese friend. No, then, Lord Von Zix, how does the prosecution wish to proceed? <laughs> I wish to proceed by murdering everyone in this courtroom. You get a hallowed chalice, and you get a hallowed chalice. <laughs> and just start throwing hallowed chalices Oops. at everybody. Uh, this trial is rapidly descending into a farce. Descending? But I say ascending? No, I I'm saying like like it's not already there. <laughs> oh, fair. <laughs> like a court wine, the first few sips are bitter enough. Clap! But what follows is so repugnant, it's good for nothing save the gutter. If, if I may, Lord Bunchix! The defense has just put forward a credible alternative explanation for what happened. Credible is kind of a stretch here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Shadow, you've on Zeke this entire time. You're Suzano, I have been Zeke's. Oh no. <laughs> oh, for, forget, forget your zodiac sign. What character in the great ace attorney are you? Sh Sh Shady, you can, you can be uh, Mrs. Garadad. You have enough horsepower. Who has enough horsepower in the biceps? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he said, hell yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> Credible. Is that your considered opinion, Mr. Foreman? The defense's argument is a joke to which I barely know how to respond. But let me start by insisting that you must all familiarize yourself better with the relative position of those places being discussed. Shady, yeah, uh, you should play Mrs. Garrett of in D&D. &D. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight up her, too. Straight up. Like throwing books and knives. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Which is angle this time? It should already be more than apparent that between the crime scene and the Garrett of household... Take the feet for improviser weapons. Yeah, there! <laughs> Runs a rather wide street, Briar Road. Which means that the distance from the Garrett of house to the scene of the crime is some, yes, 15 yards. 
Let me see, 50 yards. That's around 14 meters. So 14 meters? Oh, that's a little further than I imagined. <laughs> you were there. And, and as you ladies and gentlemen of the jury rightfully noted as having potential significance, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. In other words, the smoldering book wantonly hurled by the lazy of the house traveled some 15 yards to land on the opposite side of the road neatly between the collapsed victim's finger and thumb. Is that your final conclusion, my learned and deluded friend? Uh, um... She, she stooped down to pick it up. Like, I don't... And did the night I follow in a near identical trajectory to plunge into the middle of the victim's back. This fantasy is somewhat stretching the notion of having a bad day for the victim, I think. Even those pathetically serialized detective stories have more believable plot. Ugh. <laughs> There's nothing I can say to that. That's that prosecutor loves the sound of his own voice. Mrs. Adder. See so like detective stories are pathetic, are they? How dare he Um maybe let's pick our battles here. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> like, she's like, rude of her. It's like to try, trying to get N Mr. Natsume declared guilty was one thing. Now he's insulted <laughs> Herlock Sholmes. <laughs> now it's personal. <laughs> I can excuse accusing someone of murder, but to say that serialized detective novels are bad, that's where I draw the line. <laughs> Sh Shady said she's pulling out her bow. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be careful. It's one of it's uh, Fuji Yumi from uh, Fire Emblem. Uh oh, that that can hit from like close up and far away. <laughs> yeah, and uh, she gets uh, to counterattack any attack no matter the range. Yeah. <laughs> my lord, my lord, may I be allowed to speak? <laughs> my lord. Did I be allowed to speak? <laughs> it's delicious. I think. May I speak for the defense, yes. Go ahead. Oh, now she's allowed? But yeah, because he already allowed. gave her permission. Like, Oh, a woman <laughs> speaking in court? Narahoto <laughs> won this for her. <laughs> it's a big step for women's suffrage everywhere. Yeah, that's why he's in the history books. <laughs> the prosecution might consider the idea a fantasy. But what the defense has postulated was believable enough to persuade the jury to change its leaning. And as such, the court has a duty to explore this alternative explanation as thoroughly as possible. <laughs> to that end... She's just like, is this, is this seriously happening? <laughs> Juror number four, Miss Joan Garrida. Must be called to testify and submit to cross examination. Saints alive! A cross examination of a juror. <laughs> What's next? A parrot? <laughs> What's next? Order, a whale? Order! Order! Listen, the whale was never cross examined. Oh, okay. Order! 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 <laughs> this this is highly irregular. Either. It is unprecedented for a member of the jury to be summoned to the witness stand. My leg! <laughs> dang, dang it, only if, if only I had that voice clip to play, or, or sound clip every time he does that. Oh my gosh, you should definitely get it. <laughs> Lord von definitely, put it definitely put it on the bot. <laughs> there, are, there are already witnesses in the stand whose testimony the defense may further cross-examine. If my learned friend's farcical theory has any truth in it. And both the burning book and a jackhammer must have flown through the sky before this couple's eyes. And we must assume that they are able to testify accordingly. They've had to stay on the stand this entire time. 
<laughs> they're just like, mm. ah. They're just making out the entire time. <laughs> God. What do, oh, what do you yeah. say, witnesses? I mean, he's asleep. Does she just, just while he's asleep? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Yes, sir. Guns will really be reporting for duty, sir. Yes. Lovely eyelashes. Thanks. Yeah. He gets them from his wife. Oh no! <laughs> Lila, like, he's bought. He uses her false eyelashes. Sweet home Alabama, playing the distance. <laughs> Good morning, officer. Sorry for dozing until now, sir. I haven't slept for a month and a kind of a villain who's appeared on my beat, sir. Oh. They are so heroic, these London bobbies. Patricia, my darling, I've been neglecting you, but no more. Oh, Rowley, my hero. You make me swoon. Is he actually awake now? Very well, I hope I reject the defense request. Sounds like it. Oh. And all of the witnesses in the stand to testify again. State forthwith before the court any details pertaining to the defense's alternative <laughs> explanation of events. Yes, sir. I feel like, like this is like a character shift that I was not expecting. Him waking <laughs> up. Wrote... Yeah. Like... It's like when Snorlax opens his eyes. <laughs> Or oh, we don't have to talk about polarizing pancake. I, I've left that memory. <laughs> this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Gerda. Believe me, London Bobby is good for his word. You see, sir, the windows on the top floor of the Gerda house are top hinged casements. casements. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out the window, we would have seen it. I did leave the scene to go and fetch help with my trusty Raleigh was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. I didn't take my eye off the crime scene for one moment, sir. Nothing strange to report on that front, sir. She just said that last time that he was sleeping. No, she was sleeping when he got back, or after she got back. She said he went napped face down. Mm. Uh, this is quite Fair startling. Top-hinged casement windows. I'm not pushing any, uh... Any of my cockamamie stories at this point. I can't trust myself anymore. That detail is, was not in the police report, Constable. Shady said, wait, doesn't Snorlax learn high horsepower? Hmm, excuse me for a moment. Uh huh. <laughs> that. That. Uh, yes, um, sorry about that. I must have been a little drowsy. <clears throat> he, he's doing the thing. <laughs> he's doing the ooh woo. <laughs> Who will offer for the prosecution? I'm so sorry, I'm such a silly barker. <clears throat> you cannot excuse your sins with drowsiness every time, Constable. No, sir. I'm sorry, but... What exactly is a top-hinged casement window? Oh, no. <laughs> your poor summer child. <laughs> and you. We cannot excuse your ignorance with such trite remarks, my learned friend. It's obvious by its name. Like, I've never heard of it before, and I already know what it means. Of course, sorry. I've... Why does her book have it? Her book has everything! Her... I just... Her, oh, this is the her, her, on all her, is, her, her book literally just contains the entire internet in printed form. This was before the internet. Oh, fair enough. It's this video, a... this stream right now, this is in her book. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Cast your mind back to the windows in Mr. and Mrs. Gerardo's room. Alright, I'll try. <laughs> like, he literally saw them, too. <laughs> so the window opens in order to allow air to circulate inside the house. Oh my gosh! Is that a, like... Like... What, a t an empath? Telek telekinesis? I don't even know. She, she can she can adjust memories. 
Oh, I thought you were implying that she's moving the window back in the Garadup's house right now as she oh, talks. Oh, no, no, no. She's like, she's like manipulating uh, Ryunosuke's memory. That's more impressive in my head. I don't know. Manipulating okay. memory isn't that hard. Fair enough. <laughs> but at a top hinge casement window, it swings open along, along the upper edge, as you see. I'm glad you rectified your ignorance of casement window's most prominent feature. With its stay, a metal bar which prevents the window from being opened beyond a certain amount. It prevents it from opening? This is all news to me. <laughs> Absolutely correct, sir. In other yeah, words, everything is to you. if a book or a knife would have been thrown through the open window, it would have clattered against the pane and fallen straight down to the pavement below. No. We see the problem then. Good. Your education in windows is complete. <laughs> That's all there's need to know about all windows. <laughs> there was never any possibility of either the book or the knife traveling 15 yards over the road. Then why didn't you start with that? <laughs> it is unless the window pane had been shattered, something we've discounted already. Because he thought that much was obvious. He thought he he thought. Rinusuke wasn't dumb enough to not know what a top hinged uh, casement window is. We could have avoided two and a half hours of arguing back and forth. That can't be! Ooh, did you see that, Rory? The young man just collapsed in agony. Oh, there he goes. Oh, yes, my darling, I saw it. I saw how you crumbled before me. Oh, oh Rory. You're so strong. How is this happening? How, how are they? How are they like getting a romantic moment over me? <laughs> getting <laughs> humiliated? <laughs> how did my lack of knowledge on top casing windows make me lose the case? Lead to them making out. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even started the cross examination yet, and already my argument's been destroyed. Go to the field crap. Could drag yourself up right again. The court awaits your cross examination. <laughs> My lord, oh good, another desperate situation. Let's grasp the straws again. Hold it. How can you say that for certain? A very good question, sir. And the answer is this. As the noble founding principles of the forest written on it is reminded to all us policemen first one duty. He said that before, didn't he? Did he? I can't say I remember. To patrol the streets of London town and uphold the peace of the common man. It's what the job's all about. And that's why I can't stand here today beside my long-suffering wife and tell you Bobby's good for his word. Well, rubbing my tired eyes, admittedly. Sir! Oh, you're so manly. Of course I am, my darling Patricia. Oh, Pat. Oh, oh, Rowley. You're so cute. No, none of this is what I meant. I meant, how can you say for certain that this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garadab? Oh, I see, sir. Should have said so earlier, sir. Yes, well, so could you answer the question? That was a waste of time, then. Absolutely, sir. I'll answer to the fullest of my ability, sir. The surprising reason why Mr. Mr. Gerdab's domestic dispute can't be related to this case. But before I get into that, sir, just one thing. Yes? I'd very much like you and your, all your countrymen to understand the great British institution of Scotland Yard. So I hope you'll take back some tales of us to London Bobbies and how we uphold our guiding principles. I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I've only just arrived here. So to that end, sir, I'd be happy to lend you my warrant card for approval. But I must warn you, you won't be able to get through it without shedding a few tears. Thank you, I'll try. <laughs> uh, 
Can we, uh, can we look at that card? I'm sure yeah, I it just it wouldn't let me till he finished talking there. Policeman was trying to preserve the peace within his allotted beat. Patrolling officers expected to walk 20 miles around his beat every day for the furtherance of the community's relations. Any crime falls under the jurisdiction of the beat in which they're discovered. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigation to help detect it. Man, I barely could resist crying there. Like, it was hard. <laughs> Hold it! Oh, what you mean, they don't fully open, is that correct? Yes, sir. They're just not allowed a bit of air through the house, you see? We're restricted as to how much they open. And therefore, anything thrown out the window from inside the room would simply strike the pane and fall to the street directly below. For clarity, allow me to mark the map. Here is the location where objects would have fallen. It's kind of unnecessary. <laughs> it's in the map. <laughs> <laughs> yes, directly opposite the scene of the crime, on the other side of the rather wide road. But it had been so hard for somebody to mention this top hinge casement thing before. Well, I have another question for you, Constable. What would that be, sir? How do you how do you even know? Why would you have any idea what sort of windows Mr. and Mrs. Gerdup's house is furnished with? Uh, shit. Shady, this is a, shady's on this spot on the map that shows you just how stupid you are. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Vonty doing that. Uh, well, sir, that's very simple. You see, I helped with the investigation yesterday. Oh. Oh. Pursue me. Do you something to add, Mrs. Beat? Sorry. You look, well... Delighted. Is there some particular reason for that? Oh, I was just remembering that all. We really were so lucky. Lucky? What do you mean? Well, of course I felt terrible for the poor women who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. We were just so lucky it didn't happen on Rolly's Beach. It was so close, you see. Oh, I hadn't realized. Oh yes, that's Street by Road. That's the boundary between Rolly Street and the next one. Isn't that right, my love? Castle Beat. Hmm? Oh, yes, that's right. That's the reason I was helping out with the interviewing the occupants of the Gerdab household yesterday. There are houses on my beat, you see, sir. Hmm, that really was cutting it close, then. Constable, I wonder if you could clarify something. If the Gerardus household is on your beat, does that mean the pavement next to it is as well? That said Mr. Gerardus house. Yes, ma'am. The pavement on that side of the road is part of my beat. See, I was unaware of that. Just think, if the women had been attacked just on the other side of Briar Road, we would never have been able to go for that meal to celebrate our wedding anniversary. But that's the life of a Bobby, after all. I already put two in Extraordinary together. people are Bobby. It's tirelessly working for the benefit of our Londoners. Huh? They move the body across the street so they can go on their date. Really? That's illegal. Yeah, but they didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. That's what it is. Do you know what I think? I think it was a good Lord's way of rewarding my Boroli for all his hard work. Don't you think so, my darling? That must be it, Pat, my love. That must be it. I think perhaps we should make sure we have that information officially on record. Leave it to me, Mr. Narhoto. I'll take care of it immediately. Case files updated. And now it's my turn, I think. Oh, 
Ah. Uh, okay. Sorry. That's scratching my itch. According to my notes here, the sun had gone down already and it was dark. Oh, but Rilly and I were strolling along, gazing at the night sky, looking for our lucky star. Sorry? The star that will guide us to eternal happiness. Can it guide you to answer the question? If a flaming book had cut across the sky in front of us, it would have lit up like a shooting star. And if I had seen a shooting star, I would have made a wish upon it. Let really be an inspector, I would have said, three times at least. Of course, what with the smog and everything? Couldn't actually see any stars. Oh, well. In short, are you trying to say that neither a book nor a knife crossed the sky before you? Yes, sir. That is correct, sir. As sure as the night sky and let it is starless, sir. Hmm, it certainly seems like they're telling the truth. And then we saw the poor woman fall to the ground, so we ran straight over to help her. Yeah, I see yeah. that that's what it was. She went down to pick up the book, and then the knife stabbed her. Yes, he said he went to a nearby police back to fetch another officer, is that right? That's right, yes. If I had been on the Rolly's beat, I would have known exactly where it was going, of course. Don't feel bad, my love. You can't be expected to know the location of every police box and every beat. The Rolly told me the way, only I sort of got a little lost on the way. Patricia, my darling, that's why I love you. Your terrible sense of direction is bewitching to me. <laughs> oh, Pat. Oh, Rolly. How many times are they like coiled on oh, each please. other at this point? Uh, infinite. The, the, she does do a full turn every time. The, the it's more more significant how many times they haven't done that. So that's just their default state of existence. I suppose that was gone for about fifteen minutes. But like I said, my Rolly was at the scene the whole time, making sure nothing was disturbed. I was off duty at the time, of course, but a true Bobby is never really off duty, sir. <laughs> Shady said eventually they're gonna fuse into one. Nothing to report. That's correct, sir. Nothing to report? What? That's correct. Nothing to report? What do you mean, nothing to report? What? Is that what he said? Oh yeah, nothing to report. Nothing to report. It's what? canon. It's, it's canonically in the Fire Emblem Three Houses. <laughs> oh, that they're making Fire Emblem Foldland. reference. This is Foldland. I've Foldland. never played Foldland. Fire Emblem before, JK. <laughs> this is where I put but, my Fire Emblem playthroughs. If I had them, that's correct, sir. I had my eyes wide open the entire time. Never looked away for a second. No one else approached the scene. Nothing was removed from it. I can swear to that on the yard's honor, sir. Really? That seems a little strange. Beg your pardon, sir. Strange, sir. Seems altogether regular to me. This burnt copy of the Lion's Pride was originally in the Gerda household. So the question remains, how did it find its way into the hands of the victim? Can you shed any light on that, seeing as you were at the scene of the crime that entire time? Uh, could be, could it be a different copy, sir? One that just happened to be burnt as well. Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping a book like that in her hand? As we can see from this photographic print, she had a bag over her shoulder. Well, sir, that book was in a lady's hand from the moment we arrived on the scene. Is that so? There's something about this statement that's not sitting right with me. The two mysteries of how that knife ended up in her back, and how that book ended up in her hand. There must be some common thread between them. Um, can I ask you something, please, Mr. Lawyer, sir? Um, yes, of course. What is it? You're, you're doubting us, aren't you? I can tell. 
What? I, I wasn't really. I mean, what's she doing? Just because I'm a woman doesn't make my testimony any less valuable. Yikes. You might just see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman of my world, I am. I, I really don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. Jesus, I don't want to hear it. My voice will be heard. My lord, you'll let me speak, won't you? Yes, Miss Lee. I will allow you to supplement your testimony if you so desire. Foot in mouth. Sometimes the path of least resistance is the sage one. Hand foot in mouth disease. There was a very loud mutter. I heard that. That Japanese man thinks a police woman's wife's words counts for nothing, does he? Well, watch out, sir. I might let you get away with it. Something like that, but my Broly won't. Shady said, oh no, she's gone full Karen. <laughs> I, I said that earlier, yeah. I'd about to speak to the manager of Japan. Duly noted, Mrs. Beat. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. <laughs> what could she possibly about to say, I wonder? Something that's gonna incriminate you further. It's a new statement. Read it. <laughs> uh, oh, I was gonna say that's not even worth pressing. I know what I said. My ever eyes never let me down. My sense of direction is a little off sometimes, though. It's not worth pressing. I mean, we can press it. I don't but know. We... Not if you know what to. If you know to present something. But th is that the statement in between? Is that what? Is that the only new statement? That's the only new statement. Oh, then, then press it, yeah, because I don't know what to present. I uh, thought the last two statements were... No, I just added one. one. Miss Speed, nobody is questioning what you've told us. I saw it, I did that evening, I clearly saw it. The little Eastern man with the whiskers and the funny cut backs to get away from the scene. <sighs> But I know what I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books and knives flying through the sky. How oh, very clear. You, you also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction. Oh, yes, well, that's a little embarrassing, really. I always end up at the wrong place when I've made arrangements to meet Raleigh. He, I guess ever so cross. Excuse me. Excuse me. Control beat. Is there a problem? Eh? Uh, um, uh, no, sir. No problem, sir. Did you wife's remark just now bring something to mind, perhaps? Oh, um, well, in a way, sir. Yes, sir. I, I was just remembering that the same thing happened that evening, is all. Uh -huh. You mean Mrs. Beat lost her way on the night of the incident? Well, you see, I sent her off to find a police box the next beat over for mine. But she was gone a fair bit longer than what I was expecting. Thought she'd be back inside ten minutes, but my darling was gone a good fifteen. Oh, Frawley, you're such a tease. But the reason I was so long was because of the bouquet, silly. The bouquet? Sorry, what bouquet are you talking about? The bouquet. Oh, it was a present for our wedding anniversary. Probably so romantic. He saved up for, with, for it with farthings and hairpins. He found in the gutter while doing his rounds. Yes, how romantic. I'd forgotten all about it until just now. Had my darling. Ah. Uh. Hmm, uh, oh, yes. But that was just between us. No talking about anyone else, darling. You have to promise. Oh. Oh, you cut out there. Oh, really? Oh. What was that all about? Councillor Beat looked very obviously troubled during that exchange. I'm afraid I can't offer any... Useful insight, Mr. Naruhodo. But I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Mrs. Beat about the bouquet. Mrs. Beat, this bouquet you just mentioned. 
I'd like to add details about your testimony, please. Oh, really? Yes, I'd love to. Vasi <laughs> is fuming. Why does that bouquet matter? <laughs> Hey, press that bad boy. This is, uh, this is a new dialogue. <laughs> oh. What happened was, I dropped my bouquet and ended up losing my way for a while. Hold it! You mean dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right. Oh, I was so upset. When we ran over and saw, it was a woman with a knife in her back. I was so shocked, I dropped the bouquet Raleigh gave me. It was in a dark spot where the streetlights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice at first. And then you went to the police back to report it to the policeman whose beat was on. Yes, and then came back to the scene together with the other constable, you see. That's why I spotted my bouquet again, but the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, there was no one near the victim's body at all! Hmm? Occasionally reminding Mrs. Beat. The victim is not deceased. It's I was arrested for a moment before I heard a voice calling me from the other side of the road. It'd still be appropriate to say the victim's body. Like, even if she's not dead. Yeah. Your husband, presumably. That's right. Sillery had gone over the wrong side of the street. Although, I'm going to blame the bouquet this time. I can't think of how it got there. I really can't. So the bouquet somehow moved from one side of our road to the opposite. Mm hmm. Hmm, clear is indeed. It's the other way around, isn't it? But the worst of it is I forgot to pick up the bouquet here when we left the scene. That beautiful rose Raleigh bought me, but that change from the gutter he's been so long collecting. My bouquet. Do you perhaps mean the sorry solitary rose? Listen, Von Zeke, they're not well off. Look at their outfits. It's okay. Wow, how rude. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, that's it. That's the bouquet Raleigh bought me for our anniversary with, with all the bits of change he found in the gutter. Also, I don't think roses aren't season at this time of year, so maybe, like, it probably was very expensive. Maybe just call it a rose. Wow, check your privilege out for him. Tell us, Lord Vonzix, where do you come by the flower? According to the reports by the police officer in charge of the crime scene investigation, it was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Garrett of household. In front of the Garrett of house. Although it wasn't noticed until the morning, as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. It was believed to be of no relevance to the case, since it was found on the opposite side of the thoroughfare. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Can I have a duck now, please? Hmm. No, I think, it, I think for good measure, this row should be added to the court record as evidence. Give, give me a sec. I gotta. I gotta.